Hi there, it's Stacy Harding with Hourglass Consulting Group, and this is another edition of Hourglass Insights. I thought what I'd talk to you about today is the concept of connection with other people, particularly how we're making them feel when we do engage with them. I've recently been reading a book by David Brooks. It's called How to Know a Person, The Art of Seeing Others Deeply and Being Deeply Seen. So here's the book. It was uh, released, I think, late last year, so fairly new. David Brooks is a op-ed writer for New York Times and uh, has written a number of books, and I think he appears on PBS NewsHour quite often. But in his book, he talks about the importance of making people feel seen. He goes so far to say that people need to be recognized in this life as much as they need, need food and water. And I think I can concur with that, even from my own personal experiences. So I wanted to just challenge you today a little bit about how you're connecting with people, particularly when you meet them for the first time or you're meeting them for the hundredth time. How do you engage them when you come into connection? Is it with enthusiasm and passion, making them feel wonderful, or is it with some indifference? You know, I've met people in my lifetime, particularly in business, where I meet them for the first time and they are so engaging and so passionate in getting to know me and talk to me that I felt like I've known them for 30 years and literally made me feel like I was the most important person to them, at least for that moment. And then there's been times where I've come across people that it doesn't even look like they could be distracted by the introduction. You know, in his book, uh, Mr. Brooks goes so far to say, it's better to have someone feel like you dislike them than you are indifferent about them. Because when we're indifferent about people or make them feel that way, it's saying to them that they don't matter, that it's not important for them to know me or, or vice versa. And so I wonder if we stop often enough to think how we're making people feel each time we engage. I think where it might be hardest is with our family and friends, maybe even with our colleagues at work, because we just know that they know we love them. There's that old saying, you know, the husband and wife get married. And uh, some years later, the, the, the spouse is asking the husband, um, I thought you loved me. He said, well, I told you that on the day we got married. If anything changes, I'll let you know. Well, if we make those kinds of assumptions with our colleagues and our friends, and our family, imagine how it might feel to a stranger or somebody that's new, that they really don't know that we feel that way about them. So I hope that we can cognitively be thinking about how do we make people feel every time we engage with them? Because if we don't, we're telling them a story about ourselves, of course, but more importantly, we're telling them a story about themselves that perhaps in the back of their mind, they've already been doubting their value in this world or on the team. And when we show them indifference, it says to them, I knew it. I really don't matter. What a terrible way for us to have people feeling about connection with us. So let's make people feel great, even if we have to kind of just pull out of our shell and fake it a little bit about our passion. But if we can really engage people and make them feel like we see them today and we hear them, they will walk away being better for having that connection with you. So I hope this has created some thoughts for you. And perhaps there are some strategies that you might uh, employ to stop and cognitively think about how you're being perceived by others. I know I'm going to do it. Thanks for watching and have a great day. I'll see you next time.